Today we have two very similar looking watches. We have the Black Bay 54 and the Black Bay 58, but there's a couple of key differences that you need to know. Welcome back to the Chisholm Hunter channel. My name is Harrison, as always. And today we have a versus video. We have the Tudor Black Bay 54 versus the Tudor Black Bay 58. I know that a couple of people in the space have done this video already, but I want to give my unique spin. Also on that note, I know it's been a while since we've, since we've done a versus video, but I just thought it was appropriate seeing as the 58 and the 54 are probably the most hyped over watches in Tudor's arsenal. And I know that since the 54 has been released, the Chisholm Hunter Watches Instagram has been flooded with DMs. So thank you for everyone that DM'd me and let's get to it. So let's begin with some of the specs from these watches. So the 54 in my left hand is a little bit smaller as its name suggests than the 58. It comes in at 37 millimeters in diameter. Whereas the Black Bay 58, which is now in my right hand, comes in at 39 millimeters in diameter. Now, personally speaking, I have 6.5 inch wrists and I have to say that the 54 is just too small for me. I'm six foot two, I'm quite a big guy, so I'd have to go with the Black Bay 58. The thickness on the Black Bay 54 actually comes in at 11.24 millimeters. And this is a slim watch. And if you think about it, it actually has domed sapphire crystal glass and a boxed case back that you can see here, which adds a little bit to the thickness. But if you actually look at the case profile in the lugs, it is a lot thinner than you might expect. And I, I like this. The Black Bay 58 in my right hand, however, comes in at 11.9 millimeters in thickness. Bear in mind that this does have boxed sapphire crystal glass and a boxed metal case back as well, so it increases it slightly. But it's interesting, when you hold these watches side by side and when you get them both on the wrist, you kind of realize how small the 54 really is. And even though I would consider Black, the Black Bay 58 a small watch, it wears so much bigger than the 54. The Black Bay 54's lug to lug comes in at 46 millimeters and the Black Bay 58's lug to lug comes in at 47 millimeters. So that is a slight difference, but that slight difference in my opinion makes a big difference for the wearability of this watch. Now that we've covered the basic specs, let's look at the more intricate detail of these watches because there's a few minor details that set these watches apart from each other. It's funny, they've got the same aesthetic, the same looks, but two totally different personalities. The next big detail we need to talk about is the fact that we have just hit 28,000 subscribers. I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. A year and a half ago, that little awkward boy would never have thought he would get this far. Honestly, it's phenomenal. Our next goal is 50,000 subscribers. So if you could help us get there by hitting that subscribe button, honestly, I would, it would mean the world to me. And finally, we get to the delicate little details that stand these two watches apart aesthetically. And the first one that I was immediately attracted to was the second hand. The second hand in the Black Bay 54 is a lollipop second hand. And this is pulled inspiration directly from the Tudor Submariner in 1954. And if you're confused about the reason why this is called the Black Bay 54, it's because the original Tudor Submariner came out in 1954. And there's a lot of similarities between the two models. The Black Bay 58 in my right hand, however, has the snowflake second hand. And this, in my opinion, gives it a more modern feeling design. Whereas the lollipop second hand on the 54 gives it a more vintage feeling design. And that's pretty accurate actually, because it has been drawn from that 1954 Tudor Submariner. So it really depends whether you want to be a bit more modern and a, or a bit more classic. I'd probably be a bit more modern. The next detail to cover is the T-Fit clasp. The Tudor Black Bay 54 has the T-Fit clasp with on the fly macro adjustments. And you can do it just like this. And it's so easy, so brilliant, and I'm a huge fan of this T-Fit clasp. However, the Black Bay 58 does not have this T-Fit clasp. It has macro adjustments, but you need to use your toolkit in order to do them which is a little bit frustrating and I'd like to see that being upgraded on the Black Bay 58. I would have to choose the 54 here. When it comes to the differences on the bezels of these models, there's three main differences that I can see that set these models apart from each other. And these differences can be seen on the Chisholm Hunter website where we're actually official stockists of Tudor watches. Make sure you click the link below, get a picture of these boys up side by side and try and guess those differences. 
The main difference on this bezel is of course the arrow at 12 o'clock mark. On the 54 you have a kind of white silvery arrow as well as the numerals on that bezel whereas on the 58 you have a red arrow and then a gold uh, numerals on the rest of that bezel. And to be honest, I don't know why they didn't put that red arrow on the 54. I think it would have looked really, really contrasting and really nice against that kind of white silvery colour and against that black bezel. I think it would have just looked really good on the 54. Another difference is that on the 58, it has minute markers from the 12 to the 15 mark and on the 54, it doesn't have these minute markers. Now, I think that the reason they've done that is so that the 54 doesn't look that crowded um, because of how small it is. And it also gives it a cleaner look to me. I actually quite like the 54 for not having these markers. The final difference on the bezel of these models is the teeth. So when you look at the Black Me 54, it actually has larger, more spaced out teeth to the 58, which is smaller, more dainty, teeth. And I think that the reason that Tudor have done this is to make the grip easier to turn on that bezel because it's a smaller face than the 58. Next on the list we have the crown on these models. So when we look at the Black Bay 58 it's quite large and it has kind of a gap between the face and or the case and the crown uh, and that, that's filled in with silver. Now you can actually see on the Black Bay Heritage models that they used to fill these in with the colour of the bezel. So my Black Bay was in kind of a burgundy between the crown and the case of this watch. So that is kind of the same aesthetic as this. The crown, however, on the Black Bay 54 in my left hand is a lot smaller, a lot more dainty, and it's a lot more teethy, a lot more grippy. Its notches are kind of deeper and bigger. And this is actually a throwback to the 1954 model. It's funny, when you look at the Tudor Submariner with the reference number 7924, you can see a load of, of details appearing in this watch that have definitely, they've been upgraded, they've been tweaked, but they've definitely been pulled from that model. And I do love to see them pulling from their history books. Next up, we have the movement of both of these models. Let's begin with the 54. The movement in this model is the manufacturer caliber MT5400. This movement is of course COSC certified and self-winding with a bi-directional rotor system. To top it off, the 54 has 70 hours of power and that 70 hours of power is squeezed into 11.24 millimeter case thickness, which is pretty impressive. Moving on to the Black Bay 58, it has the manufacturer caliber MT5402. This is also COSC certified and self-winding with a bi-directional rotor system and it has a power reserve of approximately 70 hours. And that is the main differences between the two that you guys need to know. But the question still lies, which one wins? Before I get into that debate, because I'm going to start comparing these two in a, in a kind of logical sense, I would love to know what you guys think in the comments. Also, it's time for the Chisholm Hunter tradition, which of course is the wrist check. What's on your wrist today? Have you got a Black Bay 54 or a Black Bay 58? Let me know in the comments. The Black Bay 54 to me is a lot more neutral, a lot more minimal. It has a lot more appeal to the wider market because it's not got as much personality or flair, shall we say, as the Black Bay 58. It's a lot more modern. It's like a modern glass house that's very minimal, very neutral colours inside. There's nothing that's too dangerous there that might turn people off. Whereas the Black Bay 58 is a lot more classic. It's a lot more, a lot more flamboyant, a lot more eye-catching, and it might not appeal to the broader market because of that. The Black Bay 58 is like that old classic farmer's built house. It has a big log fire, old paintings, tons of character thrown in there, but it's not for everyone. Not everyone likes living in an old built house. Some people want that new modern glass minimalistic design. And that's kind of the difference that you've got here. Aside from the fact that they're totally different sizes, of course, I have to say that I'd probably go for the Black Bay 58 have that extra bit of spice, that extra personality. But I do think the 54 appeals to a broader market, but it's just that little bit too small for me. I have 6.5 inch wrists, I'm a bigger guy, I'm six foot two. So in my eyes, the 58 wins. 
Remember that this is just my opinion and I would love to know your opinion. Would you go for the 54 or the 58? Do you think that the 58 is that little bit too big or do you think the 54 is that little bit too small? Please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed, please hit this subscribe button. If you didn't enjoy, then you can hit this video to watch another video that you might enjoy. And, and that's it. See you in two days.